Creating a hailstorm is no easy task, according to researchers at the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety, who said the project was several years in the making. Duplicating Mother Nature, researchers were able to compare how different types of residential roofing and siding materials perform during a full-scale indoor hailstorm conducted at its research facility in South Carolina. This particular test was a long time in the making, well over a year. We have been looking forward to this test since our facility was under construction. Um, hail is very unique. To get the hailstones right and then to be able to propel them correctly in an area that's going to affect the building right, there were several moving pieces to that target and several different engineering designs that had to be worked out before this could come a reality. Many factors went into recreating the event, but the star of the show was the hail. Tim Reinhold, Senior Vice President and Chief Engineer at IBHS, details the steps needed to create a full-scale indoor hailstorm. A big focus has been getting the hail right. But the tests that people have been using up to this point are either steel balls, which don't really create the same kind of damage that you typically see out in the field, or solid ice balls, which are a bit better but still do more of an indent it's almost like hitting it with a ball peen hammer as opposed to the kind of damage where you see on a shingle roof anyway, the particles blown out when it hits. So what we've been working very hard at is trying to create something that's much more realistic in terms of hailstones so that when we do the impacts, we get the same kind of damage you see in the real world. The hailstones were made up of a recipe of 80% seltzer and 20% tap water. And we did that because when you freeze the seltzer water, it actually traps some bubbles in the hailstones. And those bubbles help us control the density to make it more realistic and more like what Mother Nature produces. Engineers wanted to pick typical materials that you would see damage to, allowing observers to analyze the results after the four-minute test. This system is really designed to hit the roof and we hoped we would get more impacts on the wall, but we only got a few impacts on the wall. If we had had a two-story, then we probably would have seen more damage to the wall sides. But when you look at the kind of damage that is coming out of storms and, and analyze the results, about 90% of the claims are related to the roof and the soft metals up on the roof, the gutters and things like that. And when you look at this building, you're gonna see a lot of damage to the gutters. You'll see damage to the roofs. On the metal side, you're gonna see something that's very typical, the kind of damage you get to metal roofs with the indentations. There's no leaking going on, but it looks pretty ugly. And then on the shingles, you'll see particles blown out. You'll be areas that over time would turn gray and be very ugly. IBHS continues to plan more testing along these scales, acquiring data that will help the industry better evaluate the effects of natural disasters like never before. Here at the Institute, we are looking into the performance of asphalt shingles, both in hail and wind performance. We're also doing wind-driven rain, we're doing wildfire, we're doing lots of different things, and we're looking forward to several publications this year.